got in the car and coming down the highway. And I just went into a fluster of tears because the Lord he loves us so much that his ultimate desire is that we never ever miss him. His desire is that we get him in the spirit. Honor God tonight for the man that God has brought in my life to cover me, to pray for me, to instruct me. Bishop Thomas Weeks III. To all of my babies that came, all of my sons and daughters in the, in the gospel. And I honor the Lord for my husband being a good husband, but I mainly thank the Lord because I'm a real good wife. just thought I would just throw that in there since he probably won't get a chance to say that. And I thank God for our church. I thank God for my husband saying yes tonight. And to all of the people that are back home, I thank God for you. All of the elders and the evangelists, Rita Twigs, all the people. It's just good to see everybody. It's good to see everybody. I'm not going to be before you very long because I'm so glad to feel the presence of the Lord in the place, but just the nugget that the Lord has been weighing on my spirit and many of you that know of the kind of ministry that God has given me. Some of you are aware that when the Lord puts something in my spirit, and I carry it for a while. He has already charted the course as to where and when I am going to prophesy this. And so when the Lord gives me words, even at home, especially in the last year and a half, they are prophecies more than they are considered to be teachings. And so for that reason, I have just kind of taken a different posture in my ministry because I sense that it is imperative that every prophet of God in the last hour is delivering the right end time message because in the midst of all that is happening for us and all the wonderful things that God is doing, we are about to meet a soon coming king. And I'm really sorry that I have not been given the privilege by the Holy Spirit to go a different route. But I was in prayer about three weeks or so ago and I have this little altar that I built in my home, in my got a little stand there and and I was on my face before the Lord reading and the Lord had taken me on this journey talking about the necessity of obedience and he began to inform me that many people that are having a spiritual or charismatic, if you will allow me to say that, a charismatic experience in the church is going to miss heaven if they don't find themselves walking in the obedience of God. The Bible said that obedience is better than our hallelujah. 
is better than our praise, is better than anything that we can offer God. Because the Lord said, if you're going to dance and shout and yet align yourself with the activities of Satan, how are we aligning ourselves with the activities of Satan? Because the devil knew how to glorify God. He was a worshiper. His whole body was made out of worship. When he opened up his mouth, the worship came. So he understood how to praise God. But something happened when he began to recognize his own self-worth and his own self-value. It's a terrible thing when you begin to look at yourself and all of a sudden you feel yourself. And all of a sudden you understand who you are. It's a scary thing when you start saying in the wrong spirit that I am somebody and look at what I have accomplished because I'm finding out every day of my life that except the Lord is pleased with my heart and my spirit and my actions except the Lord is pleased when I leave out of the doors of the church and when I'm in the confines of my own home and except the Lord is pleased with the way that I treat my husband and the way I talk to him except the Lord is pleased with my lifestyle then nothing else means nothing else. It is all a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So the Lord began to talk to me. And he began to minister to me and he said to me, he said, there are many, many, and I'm prophesying this, there are many people in this nation, in this building tonight that have callings and that have gifts. And so in our gifts, and our callings, we are busy in the hustle and the bustle. There's some things that God wants to address tonight that he doesn't want you to take over into 2004. Is that okay? Because we're in the hustle and the bustle. And, and, and he began to show me in the spirit. He said, you have people that are coming into the ministry. People that are, that are even in our church that are, that are inspiring to come into the ministry. And, and, and everybody just waiting for, for their turn in the ministry. And, 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 and when am I going to get recognized? And when is somebody going to pay attention to me? And you know, you got people all over this building that's writing books and writing plays and writing songs and, 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 and got musical abilities. And, and everybody is on the edge of their seat waiting for, for, for that one break to happen. And, and, and so then you got, you know, people in the pulpit that, that, that are already frustrated, that have already done this already, and, and trying to find out where is it that God want us to go, and then you have people in the benches that want to be up here, and you got some of us that want to be down there. And so then there's it's, it's this, this, this constant exchange that's going on, because the Spirit of the Lord said that we have lost the consciousness of what the real call of God is. He said the real call of God to me in prayer, he said begin to prophesy Beside this, that the real call of God is not being called to be a preacher. Anybody can preach, a devil can preach, a lying wonder can preach. Anybody that's gifted and talented can arouse you above of your seat because you only attract after your own kind. Don't ever be surprised when, you, when you're preaching and people are up shouting back at you because the devil knows how to take one of his servants and he knows how to plant uh, people in the audience that is his servants and he knows how to make us respond to each other. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't think that that's the spirit of the Lord because everybody gets up and start dancing because somebody preaches or somebody prays or somebody prophesies because those are not the things that get God's attention. What gets God's attention is have you answered your first call and the first call of God, he said, which is running loose. And he said, I can't get anybody to grab a hold to the original call. And the original call is not to preach. It's not to prophesy. That's not what God is going to be looking at in 2004. It's not to lay hands on the sick, but it's to become a servant in the house of the Lord. I can go home right there. Because we're doing a lot of stuff, but we have not in 
embrace the spirit of the servant. Woo, Jesus. You know, you know, I told the people, I told the people in our church, I said, you know, uh, some of them were saying, well, well, you know what, I, I came from Brother Waterman Church and I, we want you to ordain me and, and, and we, I, I want you to, you know, ordain me and, and I, I, I'm, I'm an evangelist and, and, and what, what, what my husband and I made a decision. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, God spoke to me. He said, have every member in the church to go out and buy an apron. And I don't care what you got on. I don't care about your St. John Nick and nothing else. And put that apron on. And so, Bishop, for every service, everybody all over the church got an apron on. And so, God said, until they can qualify in that calling, then you know what? No, no, no. You ain't going to be no preacher because sometimes when you give a preacher a preacher's license, he can't sweep the floor. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. See, positions is killing the spirit of the church. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Because we are dating people like flies. But they do not have the spirit of the house. They do not have the spirit of what God has called the house. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Do not think it's strange. Let me prophesy that you have burned the mortgage on this night. This is not a strange thing. Because as long as you owe the bank some money, it's not yet God's house. But tonight, it became God's God's house. And when it became God's house, God said, now I'm looking for my servants. Let me, let me, let me, let me just, Bishop, can, 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 can I just, can I just go on this a little bit? And, and I know this ain't no, I know this ain't no watch night service, but I'm not a performer, you know, and I'm so over all of that stuff. Well, I wonder if they don't shout. I don't care if you don't shout. Because you know what? You know what? We're so busy looking up here. I, I told the people in my church, I said, I can feel some of y'all spirits sitting in the audience. Oh, I just wish I had 15 minutes with Providence. Oh, I wish I could talk to Bishop. Oh, I wish I could go to lunch. And I said, you know what? You got the wrong motive. Your attention is in the wrong place. I said, if you really want to pick up the burden of the Lord, what about the person that's sitting right next to you that you haven't even spoke to? Because, because, because no, nobody hardly in this generation wants to, to learn how to be a servant because, because now everything you do, you want to get paid. You, you, oh, you, you, will you be a deacon? Well, how much is that going? Uh, how much you going to pay me? Well, uh, well, well, can you do that? Well, how much you going to pay me for washing the cars? And, and how much uh, you, you going to pay me if I come in here and vacuum? And then we call it volunteer service until we ignore it and nobody calls our name. And then after that, we start saying, they don't treat me right because I vacuum the floor every week and don't nobody say nothing. They're not supposed to say nothing. Well, I'm going to read something in here. See, you're not, you're not in the servanthood of God until you're doing something that ain't nobody paying you for. You ain't getting no credit for. And guess what? Don't nobody even know you did it. And it don't matter that they don't know you did it. You don't want them to know that you did it because the minute they bless you, you got your reward. Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Let me read something to you. Let me read something to you. Let me read something to you. Right quick, right quick, right quick. Go to Luke 16. Go to Luke 16. Right, right, right quick. Oh, somebody, somebody says servant. servant. So we, 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 we call. We, we, we really want to try to call ourselves a servant, but, but uh, says here, says here, in Luke 16. Uh, uh, it says. Uh, 16 and 10 say he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much hello somebody and he who is dishonest and unjust in a very little thing is dishonest and unjust also in much it says therefore if you have not been faithful 
In the case of unrighteous men and deceitful riches, money, possessions, who will entrust to you the true riches and the true treasures of God? And if you, if you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, whether God or man, who will give you that which is your own? That is the true riches. Somebody said, well, what has that got to do with anything about being a servant? Well, what, 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 what makes that so powerful? Go to Philippians right quick. I'm almost finished. I'm, 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 I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Y'all waiting for a hit. The, the hit had already hit. I'm, I'm, I'm. Because I didn't gave up all that stuff because, because see, what I'm understanding is that, is that my voice may be the last voice some of y'all hear before you meet your maker. You understand what I'm saying? And, and so I don't have time to uh, just slide through stuff and, and then just touch your neighbor and slap your neighbor. And, and, and you really didn't get that in your spirit. See, because we got to understand where real power comes from. And do we really have real power from God? Or, 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 or are we just performing? Because to me, real power is when you can make the devil behave in your house. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. See, I look around here and everybody can shun da 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 ba 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 in here. I mean, come on, hit a flat. Oh, hey, shun da da na 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 na. And then when the devil step up in your house, you tremble and want to get on the phone and call somebody. But what I believe that God is after, He said, I'm giving power to the servant. You don't hear me. Well, then, well, then, well, then how, do I, how do I get power? How do I get this power? It says here in Philippians, the second chapter, watch this. So by whatever appeal to you there is in our mutual dwelling, I'm, leaving, I'm reading the Amplified Bible, in Christ, by whatever strengthening and consoling, encouraging or relationship in him affords, by whatever persuasive incentive there is in love, by whatever participation in the Holy Spirit we share, and by whatever depth of affection and compassionate sympathy fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being of the same mind somebody said the same mind somebody said the same mind and one in purpose somebody said one in purpose say one in purpose now a lot of us think that we are one in purpose but our attention watch this our attention has been for many years horizontal but we have really missed the very thing that God has called us to do we really missed the opportunity to go side to side and reach out to the every person that's in your neighborhood people that's in your church do you not know that as many people as it is that come to this ministry that sits in this ministry there are still people that walk out of here sometimes feeling lonely and feeling like they don't belong and, and feeling like well you know I just need somebody to minister to me I just need somebody to reach out to me and you know what what, what, what really bothers me is that a lot of us have, a, have, have all kinds of discernments for what goes on up here you know what I sense today that prophetess is dealing with some and I sense today that maybe sister Sarita don't feel good you know the spirit of the Lord told me how is it that God can speak to you about what you think Bishop is feeling or sister Jakes is feeling but the God ain't said nothing to you about the person that's sitting right next to you that need they went to be paid or need to be encouraged but you don't feel them you don't hear me because you know what you don't get no reward for ministering to the person that's next to you you don't get no reward by going and taking out somebody's garbage and helping to wash their feet you don't get no reward by babysitting somebody's kids and they can't pay you so i didn't expect nobody to shout on this Because this ain't cosmetic preaching. This is this, this, this my kid was just plain no, plain no truth. Well, why, why do I need to, 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 to get down? What, 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 what credentials is the reason why I need to get down? Because the Bible said, watch this. 
Jesus was so powerful. This is what we say. He was so, oh, honey, ain't nobody like him. He, oh, God, he got some power. But the fourth verse says, watch this. Third verse. Do nothing from factional motives. Through contentionness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends, or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. Instead, in the true spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, let each regard the others. Here you go now, here you go, here you go, as better and superior than himself. Do you know you got people that sit up in church? Can, can I just say this? If I can, I'm gonna say, do you not know that you got people that sit up in church? coveting and wishing other folk mess up and wishing other folk fail because do you not know that they, it's almost like people waiting for you to mess up because you know, God showed me God showed me that I, I'm supposed to be up there doing that hey, do, do you not know that we don't we don't really have that kind of unity where, 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 where we're really really encouraging each other and, and cheering each other on I'm talking about for real y'all No, you take the seat. No, you, you can have it. No, 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 no. I, I prefer you have it. No, you, no, 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 no. You take the seat. But no, no, you, you can, you can, you can have this. I don't, I don't want this. No, I, I, I prefer you have it. Why, why, why? Because he said, he said, watch this. Let this same attitude and purpose and, and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained watch this but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity I'm not going to get nobody to say amen right there because see a lot of people are still bishop asking me they're still asking me I'm, I don't know about you but I'm still getting phone calls from people saying well what happened to you and why in the death I mean were well, you sure that was God and do you think you oughta you oughta have just got up in front of all them people and said that and, and I said you don't, you don't have a concept of how to get a real anointing oh, come on somebody <laughs> oh Jesus Oh, because see, when it's time to get some real power, Jesus has showed me that the only way to get a real anointing is strip yourself of everything you think you are. Oh, come on. Strip yourself of your talent. Strip yourself of your own anointing. Tell yourself to go somewhere and sit down and die. Because you know what? The more you get down, when you humble yourself, God will exalt you in due time. He didn't tell you to parade your ministry. He didn't tell you to pass out your cards. He didn't tell you that the way your ministry was going to take off, that you're going to network all over the country and you're going to get the hookup. He told you to go somewhere and humble yourself and die in his presence. See, I'm not going to get no amen right there because the Bible said in the last days that we would not endure Bishop's sound doctrine. Now, if I was a prophet up here and I was prophesying and saying, in 10 days, God said, it's going to be money. I see finances. Y'all will be running all over this place. If I start shouting, I see money. If I started prophesying and prophesying that when the balloons fall, God said, if a balloon touch you, then millions will hit your house up. You were shocked, but I'm going to tell you how messed up and warped the church is. That when truth comes, that ain't where we dance at. That's where we get tight, because we don't want to hear that kind of teaching anymore. We don't want our bellies washed out. We don't want to be purged in holiness. We don't want righteousness. Tell somebody, tell somebody, don't mess around and choose another way. No, 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 you, you, you don't hear me. I said, tell somebody, don't mess around. Y'all scared of your neighbor? I said, don't mess around and choose another way. See, because it's a sad thing when you think you're finished. You know what God began to say to me? He said, if you called, then you ought to have a seek in you greater than anybody. You know what we say? <laughs> we say, you know what, all this is for the beginning sake. But Bishop, I found out that since I had that experience, I'm 
calling out more than my people at home. I mean, I'm up preaching and they got to put the sheet over me. I said, God, what is going on? He said, because when you start cleaning out for real, when you start touching the power of God for real, don't nothing matter no more. You know what? Because we all servants. Y'all ain't hear me. You don't hear me. I said, we all servants. Do you not know that in this room right now, in the asset of God, the only thing that makes you great is your humility. The only thing that makes you great is what you're willing to die to. The only thing that makes you great is when you're willing to give up your right to be right. When you're willing to go somewhere and get on your face and say, God, hide me. Watch this. Jimmy Joseph, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I, I don't really need that tonight. I don't need to. I'm all right, Paul. But you know, I ain't about all that at home. Because he said here, he said here, wait, wait, wait. You, you, you mean to tell me he stripped himself for what? Because he could have came down here and said, I'm as God. I'm equal with God. I'm not, I'm not going to no cross and die. Because you don't hear me. But, 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 but one thing... He thought about it. He said, now to really get power, you know, some folk want to take power in their name. Some people tell you, man, you don't know who I am. I done walked up to people and say, how you doing, Gwen? Evangelist Gwen. I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. Because I knew you when you was booky. I knew you when you was cooking, and you still cooking. Oh, come on, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Come on here, somebody. You still Eloise. Come on here. Uh-huh, come on. You evangelist Eloise at church because you got your play play face on. But when you're at home, you're the same Eloise that used to pull a knife in the old neighborhood. You still ain't purged. Ain't nobody just a mess with you yet. But I'm telling you, in 2004, exposure is coming. Oh, I know I ain't got no business prophesying that. But everything that's hiding in the cover, God tell give it a sex to cover off. Because, oh, y'all. Okay, I'm messing up. I'm messing up right there. I'm messing up. Let me sit down. Because here they go, here they go, here they go. But don't come in here prophesying. No doom and gloom. Because some of y'all like Ahab. When Michael came, he said, I don't want to hear you. Because all you do is prophesy bad stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. But God told me to tell y'all that some of y'all in here been playing church too long. And he said he means what he says. He said, don't think it's strange. That's the reason why the anointing is so high. It ain't no celebration. It's God's getting it house ready. It's God elevating the anointing because the purification is about to come. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't, you don't, you don't. Okay, okay, let me just say this. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said huh? but, 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 but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume, well, watch this, the guise of a servant and a slave. In that, he became like men and was born a human being. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried horrible shanda, his obedience to the extreme death. See, that's where I got that from. When people said, did you have to say that? Did you have to do that? God said, go to the extreme death. You don't hear me. He said, go to the extreme death. He said, when I'm getting ready to do in this last hour in the lives of people, I'm getting ready to let my anointing rest on the unlikely. What do I mean by that? The very people that you think are messed up and can never get it right again. God said, those are my secret weapons. You don't get what I'm saying. The very people that the devil had counted them out and said they would never get up again. I hear the Holy Ghost saying that, but there's a second chance in the Holy Ghost. And God said, I should anoint them like never before because they took their obedience to the extreme. Death. Okay. Okay. Death. Death. What was death? So what? So even the death of the cross, therefore, because now this is what my Bible said, he stooped so low. Because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted the name that he gave up, the personality that he 
that he surrendered. He said, when he stooped so low, God then began to exalt his name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every... Oh, wait, 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 let me read it how my Bible said. That in, parenthesis, at the name of Jesus. That means he can come, anybody that humbles himself can come in his name at anything. No, 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 you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. You didn't get that because a lot of times, you know, we think we think that trouble is just trouble, but trouble ain't trouble. I I, I thought that too. You know, in the last couple of years, I thought trouble was trouble. Trouble ain't trouble. Trouble is purification. Oh yes, yes, yes. Trouble, trouble is pure. Now, I know, I know y'all in y'all collars and y'all don't want to. I know y'all. It's a dignified thing. I know we don't. We just sit here and nod, but that's all right because I know what I'm saying. It, it, trouble is, is a purifier, and so and, 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 and so when trouble comes, you know we we, we get on this binge about Satan and Lord rebuke you, and that's the devil, and you be encouraged, and that's the devil. But but see what God is raising up among us is seers and checkers in the spirit realm, and so and so in 2004, instead of people telling you to be encouraged, they're gonna say, you know what, God after that lying spirit, you had it for a long time and we don't want to tell you that you exaggerate but see the reason why God allowed this to happen because he after that lust spirit he's after that fornicating spirit he's after that deceitful spirit that you have oh see and, 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 ain't nobody in here like that but me maybe maybe I'm the only one that just got to keep on staying on the altar and keeping my flesh on the altar and keep on dying before God but I'm telling you listen listen anytime you can you looking for God for help I don't care you can get sick tonight and go to the emergency they not going to touch you until you go through admitting you got to go through admitting before they will touch you. And that's what's wrong. We're now creating the kind of churches where we come in and we pretend so long with each other that we can't even really tell nobody what's wrong with us. Oh, yeah. How you doing? I'm blessed of the Lord and highly favored and going on in Jesus. And inside, you want to kill yourself. Inside, you have a nervous breakdown. Now, do I, I just want one witness out there that said, you know what? I know we're praising God in here tonight, but prophet, is you talking to me? See, we want to pretend like it's all right because that's the good thing to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, 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 that's, that, that, that's just comfortable for everybody. But I believe that there's somebody in here tonight uh, that even though your hands is up, uh, your spirit is crying, help me, Jesus. Uh, even though your mouth is open and you're dancing, on the inside you're saying, God, uh, if you don't do something for me, uh, I'm not going to make it in 2004 because I'm about to lose my mind. Uh, I know there's a call of God on my life. But I don't know what's wrong with me, but I can't seem to give up what I'm doing. Now see, if that's, wait, wait, wait. if that's you, and I know you're sitting next to somebody, you may be in the dignified group, and, you know, you may be in the, in the group where they don't go through admitting. Just tell your neighbor, just say, excuse me, but she's talking to me. And I, I, I don't know about you, but, but, but maybe God didn't send her for you tonight, but tonight, Tonight I'm gonna get my deliverance because uh, because the number four of exit 2004 is saying we're going out of some stuff uh, and we're coming into something different. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, don't play this cheap because this is not just ironic. 1996 was the first time that I ministered for woman now at loose. That oh, that's eight. It's his eighth year. Why would God bring? Why? Lord, uh, allow things to happen the way they've happened between Bishop and I. And then on the double H, he brings us back together. You don't hear me, uh, because there's a double beginning happening in the spirit in this place. Uh, you are about to start all over again uh, in the natural and in the spirit. You don't hear what I'm saying. Uh, can I prophesy to somebody that will believe what God is saying? Uh, he said, after this night, uh, there shall be a melting away in the spirit realm. Because the two eights have come together. It's a double force against the power of the enemy. And this devil that you're looking at now, you will see no more. Okay, let me take Two seconds and I'm finished. Two seconds and I'm finished. Two seconds and I'm finished. I don't believe that. 
uh, before I came here, he took me to, 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 to Zechariah. Zechariah, the third chapter. And I said, God, what are you saying here? He said, he said, my servants, what I'm going to do in 2004, I'm doing it for my servants. I'm not doing it for titles. I'm doing it for my servants. I'm going to read something in here tonight. I'm going to read something here tonight that's going to change your life. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't, bother, don't bother me. Don't bother me that you don't shout. That don't even phase me. Because I done found people, even at my church, that fall out every week. And get up with the same devil. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's all right. So see, tongues don't impress me anymore. Hello, somebody. Running around the church doesn't impress me anymore. I'm not getting no amens. Can I just get one person to say something? Jumping and shouting don't impress me. What impresses me is when you get up off the floor, your life changes. You're not the same person that you used to be. God is not in the fashion of touching us anymore. He doesn't want to play around with us. He doesn't want to have a little love affair. He wants penetration. He wants to see himself growing on the inside of us. He's not the change this time. He's not after making you feel better. He's not coming to fix your marriage. He wants to fix you. God fix it. I haven't been there. I haven't been there. God, fix, I'm talking to some women right now. Just, just bear with me. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm dealing with. He wouldn't put no more on you than you can bear. When I first, when I first got married, I said, "Okay, this is it. I ain't got to worry no more about having all these sexual feelings and all that." I shouted for about three months until the Holy Ghost said, now here's the real reason. I was like, what? Hey, we going along fine. Well, we baby, we was happy. <laughs> loved each other. I mean, loved each other. I said, okay, I'm preaching, I'm going, Bishop, and I'm all, oh, I'm not all oh, oh, no, 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 no. But I didn't know that I would pick up a brick. I didn't know that I would throw a cell phone and hit his car. I didn't know that was in me. <laughs> oh, see, y'all don't want me to preach in here tonight. You don't want me to. No, 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 because, because, see, I, I, I got this makeup on. I wear heels and stockings. You know, I have a serious. I didn't know. I didn't know that I would jump on top of the car like that. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing nobody. And see, and see, and see, watch this. And then the Holy Ghost said, he said, see, I helped you. He said, because you were so wonderful. Wouldn't nobody come and tell you that, 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 that honey, you still got a temper. He said, so you know what? I had to put you in a position so that that thing can manifest itself. So a lot of stuff you sitting here talking about you going through, you ain't going through nothing. God's finally got your attention because he loves you so much. He's demanding purification. He's demanding a righteous life for real and you can't get away from it. I knew I wasn't going to get no a whole lot of amens like this. Bishop, people ain't saying nothing. What happened? They were shouting a few minutes ago. They were shouting a few minutes ago. And I said to myself, I'm right, and I know I'm right. I said, that's all right. That's all right, because I know I'm right. We went and sat down, we had a little meeting. <laughs> My mother and father was there. His mother and father was there. I was just telling myself. I was just all up there. I was all up across the floor. My mama said, Nita, sit down. I said, no, no, I ain't sitting down. She said, sit down. I said, all right, well, I'm going to tell you. But see, this is what I feel. And so, Wesley well, didn't say nothing. And all of a sudden, they said, now it's Wesley turn. Let him say his. And so he started talking, and I got ready to say something. 
And, and, and my mother said, need a hush. I said, okay, I ain't going to say So she said, write down what you want to say. So Bishop, I got my pen out. And he, he was making his point. I said, I'm all right, because when I get through, honey, I got some stuff right. I'm low. Oh, I'm going to blow him off his seat. Oh, well, when I get through, his mom and daddy going to look at him like he's crazy. They going to know that they, it's, it's me. And I just started writing down, writing down. And I got to writing, and I heard the Holy Ghost say, be quiet. And I said, yeah, I'm quiet. And he said, no, I want you to shut your spirit up. And I sat there, and Bishop, I felt like a heat in my spirit. And the Holy Ghost said to me, you change. And, I, and in my spirit, I was talking to God. I said, but God, but God, but he, but he. He said, no, no, no. He said, you, you change. It's you. And I said, no, it can't be me. I'm the providence. I'm the wonder. I'm the eighth wonder of the world. Oh, no. I speak in tongues. I promise I. It can't be me. He said, that's diminished to you. Now I'm ready to deal with the person you. And you, oh, you don't get what I'm saying. It wasn't until I married my husband that God stopped really getting to the person. Oh, y'all don't know. Oh, See, a lot, a lot of y'all thought that I was going to live off the dream of no more sheets forever. But God said there were some other demons that you was messing with. There were some other things about your personality, about your character that I wanted to get next to. You don't get what I'm saying in here. And some of y'all tell me, I'm leaving my husband this year. I'm leaving my wife. You know that the devil is a liar because it ain't them, it's you. There's some stuff that God want to purge out of you. And I'm not going to get no amens right there because we don't ever want to face ourselves. We don't ever want to say, God, if they don't never change, my heart is after you. Purify me. If my husband make the decision to go to hell, I want to be saved for real. Humility. Bishop, do you not know that the church operates in false humility? Things happening all around us and we said, I ain't going to say nothing because I'm going to be the bigger person. But in your spirit, you're not the bigger person. I just wish I had somebody say amen. In your heart, you saving it. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. But, 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 but guess what? Guess what? Guess what? See, 2004, you will not be able to come in here and hide. Because you know, sometimes when the church is big like this, you can hide. But God said the kind of word that's about to come across in this house, you can't hide. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of you all won't even do things in the church. You won't even work at auxiliaries because people have made you mad and, and you quit. You know why? Because your spirit wasn't right. The only way that God can show you you, you got to go and get back on the usher board. The reason why you quit because you don't want to face you. The reason why you quit the choir. The reason why you don't want to work in no department. Because I'm going to tell you something. The day for you coming to church talking about, I'm going to come in church. I'm going to speak to people going in. I'm going to speak to people going out. I don't want nobody in my business. Then you're not in the body of Christ because this is supposed to be a family are you hearing what I'm saying and no longer can you isolate yourself because you can't grow like that because guess what you're coming in here but you're raising yourself you are a bastard in the spirit that's all I need y'all do know that don't you all I need for one or two to touch and agree Everybody else ain't got to say amen. I have to lay this mic down right now. Because you know what my goal is? To change the body of Christ one person at a time. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. I'm not fooled into thinking that because I preach to crowds, I'm changing crowds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I'm after just that one person that's willing to say, you're talking to me. You're talking to me because I can't take correction. You're talking to me because I went through this whole year as a bastard coming to church, praising God. But every time the message got too stiff, then I don't come back. Every time somebody get ready to correct you, you're getting mad about something. Every time somebody want to tell you when you're wrong, you want to shut down. But God said tonight, he said, and you cannot take that spirit over in the 2004. You gotta come clean with God. 
of y'all tricked now. Because they said I didn't want to hear this. Well, I thought she was going to prophesy something. Well, let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. All right. All right, I'm just going to prophesy this. You know what? This is prophecy. The book of Ezekiel said, Woe unto the false prophet who tell you peace, peace, when it ain't no peace. I'm not going to get nobody to say amen. Woe unto the, to, to the false prophets that tell you it's time to get rich when you are on your way to hell. Woe unto the prophets that tell you it's okay when God is saying, I'm not pleased with you. When God is saying, you look like a Christian, you sound like a Christian, you got some good sound in tongues, but your character stinks. I didn't get nobody to say nothing right there. Because everybody can put on a smile in church. Are you getting what I'm saying? But he's sitting right here. How do I know that he's going to deliver tonight? And you know what? You ain't got to fall out. You ain't got to fall out. You ain't even got to cry tonight. Because what you don't know is happening to you right now. He is arresting your spirit right now. What you don't know that's happening here. See, I done got beyond looking at how you physically respond to something and thinking that, that, I'm, that I'm really hitting something. I don't know. As I speak now, he's arresting your spirit. Oh, my God. You ain't going to be able to sleep. He's going to take your appetite. You are not going to be the person in 2004 that you were right now. The power of conviction is going to elevate itself. You ain't going to hardly be able to speak without feeling convicted. He said, that's what's wrong with us. We're so busy trying to match the world that our level of conviction is gone. We ain't convicted about nothing. Oh, that's all right. You can do that. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right, too. That's fine. Oh, you cuss a little bit. That's all right. He understands. Oh, you use the F word? Well... You have sex a little bit, not a lot. Just, just, just every now. I don't do. I. And so the message of the gospel is weak. The Bible said that the prophets lack truth, and so they prophesy lies to get the people comfortable. You don't hear what I'm saying. I don't know if you. Hear, I, 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 I just believe there's somebody in here that don't want to miss God. See, I've been telling people, now tell me the truth. I sit at home and I watch Christian television and I sit there and I turn, 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 turn. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear the truth. I don't want to hear that either. I want to hear the truth. I don't want to hear you either. I want to hear some truth. I don't want to hear that either. I want to hear some truth. When I hear, you know what? If you're dealing with a mean spirit, now are you talking to me? Because I want to be saved. Come on, somebody. I want to be whole. I want to be righteous. Is there anybody anymore that just want to be more than a Christian? Because now we've diminished everything to being a Christian. Y'all don't like what I'm saying, so I'm going to sit down and shut up. I'm going to sit down and shut up. Like you got movie stars getting up saying, I just thank the Lord, I honor the Lord so much. You singing a lick me up, suck me down song, and suck me and roll me to me. I thank God for how he has blessed me with this. And you got Christians going, amen. It's a beautiful spirit. The devil is alive. Come on, y'all. We better start calling a spade a spade. Hello, somebody. The Bible said put a difference between clean and unclean and holy and unholy. They said, how can the devil sing Zion song? saying nothing. I just, okay. We got 10 minutes and we're in the new year. Yeah. I, I can't get nobody to say amen. I mean, I know it's a hard preach because I got all these collars looking at me and all the football players looking at me. The cute wives is looking at me. You know, it's a little intimidating sometimes when you preach in front of football players and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, y'all known how we're pretty wise. But people going to hell, y'all. I'm just going to tell y'all. Okay? If y'all don't be faithful to y'all wives, y'all going to. Okay? Y'all cheat on y'all husband, y'all going to bust hell wide open. Hell on, somebody. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care who you play for. 
You better get on the right team, and the right team is Jesus. And the right team is all the way over here. Not one foot out, sliding and parting and coming to church on Sunday and dipping and down. Come on, somebody. It ain't going to be no two-step and sliding and electric sliding in 2004. Do you not know Jesus is on his way back? God ain't calling the church to go to no parties. God ain't calling the church to the disco. Have you lost your mind? because I just messed up because if I were to get a flashlight right now and go out to the parking lot I would find most secular CDs in your cars and I do Christian so come on somebody the Bible said nobody can serve two masters either you love one or hate the other come on somebody but you can't serve God and serve the devil at the same time and in 2004 God ain't helping it yourself together get yourself together if you in here tonight you need to come get yourself together i said get yourself together anybody gotta tell you what you do you already know what you're doing you already know how you mess up you already know what you're hiding from you already know what you're slipping and sliding in and peeping and hiding i just want somebody to prophesy i just want you don't need another prophecy we don't need another person to prophesy to us all we need to do is start telling god clean my life up clean my mind up God, guess what? I never got saved for real. And that's what he said to me when I was in prayer. He said, Bishop, he said, the reason why ain't no conviction because people really ain't never been saved for real. You know, people for real, Bishop. Okay. Okay, I, I, I was talking to Bishop on the phone and, uh, I told him to share this with y'all. I don't know if you did or not. I said, Bishop, I said, he said to me, he said, Juanita, well, what really happened to you? I said, you know what? The reason why the church is the way they are is because they have never met the real divine authority of God. No, 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 no. Y'all done met tongues. And, 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 and y'all done met Hosha. And I see that. And I. Ooh, staggering, catch me. But you ain't met the real authority of God. Somebody say, yeah, I know God, I know God. Because the other day when I was in my room, a cloud came in. And I had chills all over. And the presence just filled the room. And I couldn't stop crying. And you couldn't stop smoking either. And you couldn't stop lying either. And you still ain't stopped fornicating. So what you had is, it, can I tell the truth? Can I tell the truth? What you've had is an experience with a familiar spirit in the spirit realm. You've had an encounter with a demon from the second realm. You don't hear what I'm saying? Because familiar spirits can shape themselves to feel like God, to sound like God. But how do you know when you really met God? Because once you meet him, you can't be the same. You don't ever do the same thing. There's something in your spirit that tells you no. You ain't got to have nobody around you. There's something in you that won't let you touch it again. I don't know if nobody told y'all this. Let me tell you. You in it, right? You bad boy. I watch you on TV. I'm a football fan. I was, I was mad at you when you quit Dallas, but I got over it. Forgave you. Because I ain't never, ain't nobody in, this, in the world can run and do that stop and turn thing and fake them out. I see them trying to do you, but they ain't got it yet. I said, God, I said, tell me, tell me this thing for real. I know that this is for real. He said, do you remember when um, Saul was a killer, killing everybody in sight, killing thousands of Christians? Could nobody stop him. But one day he was on his way on the road to Damascus. And the divine spirit knocked him off of that donkey. Now you, you, you don't hear this. And Emmett, this is the this is the most powerful thing I will ever tell you. Don't you never forget this. Don't you never forget this. When he got up, he didn't get up talking about. I just want to thank the Lord and testify that uh, it's been six months since I got knocked off the donkey, and I only killed sixty people. And uh, last week I killed only thirty. 
And uh, I just want, I want y'all to pray for me because I'm really getting better. You know, uh, t- today I only killed one person. He got up off the ground and never killed a day. Because when he met the spirit that said stop, he met the real Holy Ghost. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing in here. Because a lot of us is speaking in tongues and letting somebody tell you that you got it. But I'll tell you when you got it. When that thing that's in your mouth and in your belly tell you don't touch it again. And you can't touch it. You want to touch it and can't touch it. I'm not getting nobody to say amen right there. I just wish I had the real church in here because I don't hear the church. I don't hear the church. Because you know what? We so used to that by and by gospel. God is coming while you're working on it. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. I'm not hearing nobody say that. Don't let the devil fool you. If anybody stop preaching like that, in 2004, you run from them. Because God is saying now, it's time to come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. It's time to crawl out and spare not. It's time to tell the house their sins. No more problems. Because I'm going to tell you something. We tried it, y'all. We tried it that way. We tried to give y'all process salvation. But Bishop, some of them would never... N- okay, am, am, am I, Bishop, am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? We tried that way. We've been trying that way for the last 10 years. We've been trying to... Don't worry about it, way. It's all right. I know... I got a little girl that worked for me. She said, I want you to pray for me. Because I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm still living with my, with my boyfriend. I passed by the desk. I said, baby, you shacking. You can't shack. He said, what I'm going to do? Go live in the shelter. But you got saved. You don't shack. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through because y'all done got mad at me because I'm, I'm finished. I'm taking my papers. And I'm going back to my little church in D.C. Because you know what, Bishop? Last New Year's Eve, my husband and I opened up the doors of the church for the first time. And one night, 150 some people joined. I said, okay. Now we went home the next Sunday. Wasn't the baby. People was joining like flies. I mean 50 people, 60 people, 30 people. I said, baby, I said, what are we doing? He said, well, you know, God is prosperous. I said, wait. I said, now you can correct me if I'm wrong because you the man of God and you the bishop. And I'm just your wife. But I don't believe. Because you know you, you know you're more powerful than that, but 